Lynn Brown, Brown Custom Black Mesa Tree and Saddle. This is today the Salient Dressage. Uh, it's the uh, best dressage saddle I've made, and I've made a number of them that were ridden by some of the top dressage riders in the world. One of them was the UK Dressage. The other, the Premier, the Dressure, which was like the most, probably. People like Molly Siff Wright that wrote the Thinking Writing series, spent eight hours a day in my saddle. To do the salient, I couldn't use the trees I'd used previously. This is a larger tree. This is about a 16 and a half here. This is an 18. And uh, it is light. It has shape that you cannot get at all in an English tree. Neither the tree nor the finished saddle can have the complex shapes that this has. And stuffed panels will not hold up to the complex shape like this, and they don't have the basic tree to start from to make them. You have a channel all the way down. You have bars that are made of very light wood, very dry wood, and encased in fiberglass. The seat has a dish in it, in the cantle which you don't find in a typical English tree unless it's a synthetic tree and synthetic set. So, you have a good flat spot that I put in here. All you have to do then is balance yourself to ride in this flat spot, which is easily done with a protector pad. I put the earlier corrector up here because you can see the shield. They bend with fingertip action here. But they're molded to the gentle shape of a loin, so they don't bend hardly at all here. This is to keep the outside edge of a tree bar like this tree has, or to keep the rear tabs of your sweat flap and your outer flap, where they go over the edge of your veneer bar and your English tree, and create a set of knuckles. It keeps those knuckles from biting through, making your horse dorsiflex his back. And you check almost any dressage horse, and very few saddles are castle cut in the mounting of these tabs that hold the sweat flap and the outer flap, where they go over the bar of the tree. They will be sore right where those tabs are. So look at your saddle, look at your horse, palpate him here and here. You'll have the same drop four or five, six inches. Showing what the tree does on the horse, what this is in this saddle, but smaller. <clears throat> this horse has widened and thickened a little with two folded Navajos. So we have a little width, and we do have some withers to start with. This has no pinch at the top of the bars. It has contact here. It has contact here. And it tickles me that people think they ought to be able to slip their fingers up under a saddle tree or a finished saddle in the front, and they call that fit. That, my friend, starts what's called a rocking chair. There is no rock here. I've thinned these bars, kept them as straight as I can. The way you do the ultimate in straightening them is the angle from the rear to the front, called twist. And that twist lets me, becomes quite vertical here. And the way I've shaped this to follow the head shape gives you a very narrow waist. You finish rounding this out with 3 eighths of an inch to a half inch of neoprene foam and seat leather like you see on the finished saddle. If you want to know why I can hold this saddle up like this, it's because it weighs 10 pounds. Nice little added feature. The pressures right here are moved outward while this shapes to your horse, moves with your horse. This is the English protective shield that is inside your protector pad. You can see it a little easier in the corrector, that's why I used it for this. 
as the body bends, as the shoulders rotate, just like this, if this tree's in the way, it will keep scooting it, and it will scoot it back. Too far forward, it'll scoot the tree back. It's a flexible lever. So it positions your saddle on your horse using your power of your horse's body to bend the lever. The slots end right here. There are no slots right here in the center. Everything is then moving outward from there. I keep this relatively firm down here to take the pressures from the point of the head. Unfortunately, too many of your saddles today have very short points on the head. They are angled too far out, especially if you get a medium wide or a wide tree, and that puts no contact down here like you should have. Stuffing that they flocking they put in the stuffed panels will squish out here pretty quickly, and you end up when the bars of an English tree, when the head is turned like this, you end up with a rocking chair effect. Same with Western. They do not widen trees like this. This tree is wide where it counts up here. They don't widen them like this. They don't have the ability to make this complex shape. They simply bend the head in and out like that on your English tree. So you start with a regular angle, which works better than any other, to a medium wide, and to a wide. You measure them in millimeters. I don't care how you measure them. If they're wider than a regular head, they have this tendency to pinch and to rock off the mid-back. So this is the system. This is protecting from the outside edge of this tree. And uh, that's on the big, very broad, warm blood, and so on. This tree and this head was designed for warm bloods. I just got back from a Spanish riding school in Vienna working with Arthur Cotta's personal stallion. He's the head trainer, instructor of the Spanish Riding School at that time for 28 years. That was the year 2000. That was, what, 16 years ago. And uh, he rode my Orthoflex, liked it very much. I have a letter from him on that. But in palpating his horse, the shoulders were sore. I'm looking at the unbelievably thick this way, withers of the Lipizzan stallion. I came home and I created a head of a tree like this. So it gives you the ability to get down around the thick withers. It gives you the ability to still, by bringing the foot of the bar together down here, or the points as you call it on an English tree, Bringing them together, it gives you then the support to hold the front of the saddle up and not have it drop down and down and then be unbalanced and not having a way to fix it but calling the saddle fitter and hoping he can stuff the panels enough without cutting new patterns and making you a new saddle to go ahead and balance you on your given horse. This changes from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. This changes with training. We have rear balance shims that go on the rear shield. We have front balance shims, quarter inch thick each, that go on the front shield. In the protector pad you see here, they go inside here. The protective shields are right in here. The balance shims go in on top of them, all the way forward and down. No question of where they go, it's a question of how many you use to balance yourself. You get two quarter inch shims for the front of an English unit, two quarter inch shims for the back of an English unit. Now, a few things about the saddle itself. This is American Buffalo. This is not veg tanned leather like your saddle leather. This is quite soft. We've left it flexible right up in here and we've lined it from here down with saddle veg tanned leather to give it this firmness and the strength that it needs. The stirrup loops are heavy welded D and they rotate. Instead of a bar 
that makes a lump under your thigh. You have no bar. This hangs down just a little below the bar, which has some thickness, and your strip strap operates right from here. It has two layers of very strong nylon that Y and attach to the tree. <clears throat> the billet straps. We don't have any on here, do we? I guess we better put a set of billet straps on this. It's not what you call too hard. You slip them in there, pull them to there, and your billet straps are installed. You can replace them anytime you want, and extras are not high. This is double butt, and it makes a good little billet strap. It's a drop billet. It's not dropped so far that you have to use little 12 and 13 and 14 and 20 inch girths. So you can use your 24 inch and longer girth on about any horse with this amount of drop. The finished saddle, there's a little bit of foam under this leather which is not really necessary, but there is. And uh, it's kept quite thin. It shapes a little bit. Most of the shape here is the tree shape. I hope you've liked the presentation on the uh, salient dressage. And uh, nice narrow waist, a flat spot in the seat you don't get in most European saddles and a dish you don't get in any European saddle, giving you a little more room. So this saddle right here is really a cross between a 16 and a half and a 17 as far as seat size compared to your saddle. You would have to ride it to see. This one's much larger, we should run for the larger rider. Thank you very much, Ben Brown.